Yum, yum! Hey there, friend. This is James, Mutant Pixel Darknell, with Pixel Fondue, and I've got a Moto tip for you. Today I want to talk about the often overlooked library function of the shader tree, give you a little demonstration when it's a good time to use it, and explain the best practices. So let's jump in. So I have this asset that's been delivered to me. Uh, it's of a car model, and I'm going to be doing some shading to the model and then passing it further down the pipeline to the next part of the process. But when I look at the model, I can see that, if I go into the shader tree here, that the person who's modeled it, they've separated all the glass elements. So the glass on the windshield, the side glass, the rear glass, they have this glass here for the headlights. And for shading wise, it's all gonna be the exact same transparent surface, but I don't wanna to have to create the material for this multiple times. And this is where the library function really shines. So if I look at my windshield here, you see I've already set up several layers in here and I could clone these and duplicate them into other folders, but then I'd have to keep track of updating them all every time. And I could also use instances, uh, which would also update, but having to individually clone multiple layers, especially if you have a very complex surface can get really tedious. So the way that you make a library object is by taking the topmost group, uh, material group item and dragging it into the library. Now, if I take this windshield glass group and I drag it down to the library, you can see this has a polygon tag for the windshield glass. So it's limiting these materials only to be ap applied to the front windshield of this. And if I make that as part of the library object, then even when I drag it to other surfaces, it still isn't going to apply because that tag is part of the library element. So what I want to do is I want to create a new group item on there. So I'm just going to select those three and hit Control G. And then I'm going to give this a unique name, something like clear glass. So now there's no tag specified for this particular material item. So now I can take this and drag this down to the library. And you see now I have a clear glass library element in here. And the layers that I did have have been replaced by this library icon that is basically referencing this library item that I just made. So now I can very easily go into the other parts of the car. So if we go to the side glass here, I can just drag and drop this directly on there and it'll overwrite any shading that's in there. And we're gonna go to the back glass. And the headlights. And remember, library elements, the layers that they contain, will overwrite any layers that are within the material itself when you're dragging it in there. The same as if you had individually dragged all those layers in there. So now if I wanted to make some modifications to this layer, say, you know, if I did something stupid and just added another material on there, you know, I could make this orange and it automatically updates all those surfaces now that had that material applied to it. So hopefully you can make the library function part of your daily workflow and it can save you a whole lot of time. Thanks for watching.